Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from? Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. All right, hallelujah. All right, y'all's good. Is that good, Elder Doug? We need to move it up some. Hallelujah. Magnificent, King of the universe. Almighty y'all, we come to as humble as we know how, with outstretched hands and lifted up hearts, in a face of humility, seeking your counsel, your truth, in the inward parts. We don't want to be destroyed like our ancient people for lack of knowledge. Please us that everlasting truth, that word that will bring about a seed that will reward you for the love and the commitment and the faith that you have given us throughout the years. I'll be the first to say thank you for being so long-suffering towards us because the truth is we're truly not worthy of your love. We haven't showed you one thing. It's a good thing that the covenant is based on your word. Help us to be thankful, Father. Magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. You may be seated. So how serious those words you? They're more than just words. I'll go ahead and bring them on down here so these brothers can get comfortable. Putting them on them ironclad seats. Put some over here. Some over there. Glory to the King. Good to see you, Brother Greg, Brother Josh, and officially more boots on the ground and straightway <clears throat> I got people they want to see me debate a lot of people but the truth is there ain't nobody out there that want to debate me Especially if we're going to have one of them schizophrenic, demonically possessed people who claim to be some type of intelligence. Acting like that. That just show you how disgusting a, a spirit is when it's in someone. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that particular spirit can't even obey the word that says, honor all men and the king. You know that amazing? And the sad part about it is a lot of us are simply not going to be told a lot of things until we see the king. Because uh, we're too haughty, too high, high-minded and lifted up. You know what I mean? We're a quite interesting turn of events. I had some enemies that came out with me and took a lot of people with their dissimulation. In 2012, all come back seeking repentance. One of them did. And the rest of them are scattered and come to know. Yeah, amazing. But boy, when they came out, man, Pastor Dow is this, Pastor Dow is that, Pastor Dow is that, Pastor Dow is that, Pastor Dow is that. Then only come to find out later on that everything that I try to tell someone who claims to be a seer, you know, if you're a prophet, you should know these things in front of you. You know what I mean? If you're a prophet, you're going to prophesy something, you should know it before I even tell you. See, we've been fleeced by Christianity thinking uh, 
uh, there's going to be an earthquake in Japan this year. You know how I many earthquakes take place in Japan every year? <laughs> Y'all getting this stuff, man? And they are a prophet. I want to hear some thus saith Yahweh. You see what I mean? Stick your neck out on the line. Because I'll be the first one to sit there waiting to chop your head off as soon as it don't come to pass. Sad part about it is, is maybe, no, 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 I'm going to recant that because the only ones they could get are the sons of perdition. It's amazing. You know how many groups we've had come here? And then they get together, they get confederate behind the scenes. And you don't ever hear me warn everybody. Remember I was preaching heavily on the viper? Of course, I was talking only to straightway, the community. I wouldn't talk to nobody else. You would think that I'm throwing out a lifeline. The viper, he here. And most people don't discover until later on that they ain't even been bit. Some of you have been bitten. And, and, and just time has been your remedy or your antidote. Because they ain't they no more than poisonous, venomous, slithering snakes around. <laughs> look at them looking. <laughs> oh boy, this stuff, you know, wisdom is too high for a fool. And when you've been doing this stuff as long as I have, man, you know, see, I, I'm a different type of preacher than, than you people have been used to out there. I live with the people of Yah. And what I see in Israel, I see in you. There's a difference when you live it. You're, you're discerning like way up there. Way up there. There's a difference when you live it. Come on, Sister Ash, we got a few letters here. Man, I got so many, I just, there's just no way. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. Pastor Dow, I've been on a journey of repentance for the last four years. I moved to Los Angeles, California to get my life on the right path. Do you know of anyone out here I can contact for deliverance and instruction? Please, Pastor, I've come so far and struggled so hard. The only ones we got out there now is Brother Jawan them, and everybody else done bailed. They got out of California. Just like if you people are Israelites, you need to get the hell out of Chicago. Y'all ain't see what happened in Chicago? That's worse than Dodge City. Over the 4th of July weekend, 101 people got shot. 15 dead. Let's let you know that that marksmanship is not too good. <laughs> That's bad, boy. That's a bolo, isn't it? I got a video, man. You can see dead bodies laying on the streets. And you people want to stay in them cities. Can you imagine that? The worst massacre. I mean, bullets just spraying everywhere. Children getting hit. Old folks getting hit. Gangster. I trip out on gangsters. I, I ran across a couple of gangsters. They all gangsters when they're in a gang. When they by themselves, they ain't no gangster. I remember I was in Paris, man. I, I, got, I, got no, I actually got in a fight with a gangster. I busted his damn lip. Made him shut up the rest of the trip. We was on one of those big old double-decker buses. And we was down here drinking like a Cooter Brown. We were getting fooled. I was a heathen then. This guy at the top of the deck, he, he looked down and says, he says, y'all shut y'all dang mouth, make it all that guy shut your mouth, I come down there and whoop all y'all tail. That's what he said. So I looked around and I looked over here and I looked over there and then I looked up there, I said, you got to be talking to them. Because I'm down here, you ain't talking to me. 
I'm talking to you. I said, really? I said, all right, we'll see if you're talking to me. Next stop, I'll show you who I'm talking to. I said, yeah, bring it on, next stop. I kept on drinking. I was bent over, just like a drunk alcoholic would be. Next thing you know, they you know they got these big old wonders on the side. Huh? I was bent over, and McBride and Mike came in and said, Dow, look, man, this guy out there calling you out, man, look. And I looked up like this. Hey, sure enough, he was out there calling me out. I stood up and took off my jacket and said, all right, here we go. Walked outside, man, he just got by all the roofers' eyes. Walked outside, you act, next thing you know, he started walking up on me. I said, boy, boy, and he walked right into a right cross and a left uppercut. You understand, I'm in my prime then, man. I was young and strong, man. Blood splat against the, the, the bus and everything. His lip come up and then I, I, tie y'all. I looked at that, I go. I went right back on the bus, man. Of course, then everybody got courage now. So he, re, he recovered himself, right? And the next thing you know, I'm walking away. He tried to steal me from behind. And Mike, Mike and them start hollering, dow, dow, dow. So I turn around like this, right? Next thing you know, Mike and them jumps, man, don't you see he playing with you? He said, man, you better get on back over there before I break your back. And I go, well, what happened to all these people when we were down here and he was talking all this crap? That's the reward of being what you call a gangster. You get bust in your mouth by somebody who can, who can dust you off. And you don't never know what day you can get dusted off to you. There's always somebody who whoop your tail. Yeah, it is. Always somebody can whoop you, but, but for what, though? Now you got these young guys. Somebody give you a gun. You feel like they love you. Now, my question is, how'd the guns get on the streets of Chicago? See, everybody looks at the violence, but nobody pay attention to the how. Huh? How'd they get there? Unless somebody put them there. Then they have a sense of family. And next thing you know, none of them don't live long. When I was growing up, I had two cousins. Got shot and killed. Went to both of them funeral. One of them I asked to go in the military with me. Me and him and I grew up together. He was six months older than me. I had a whole bunch of gangsters back there. And, and people owed him money, and next thing you know, he had a casket full of money. Because the people that owed him money, they came to the funeral and started throwing money on top of his dead body. I said, that's real intelligent, isn't it? You're going to pay him after he's dead, he can't use it now. You know what he got shot for? Selling drugs. Then I had another cousin, his brother. Was sitting on the front porch. Can y'all picture that video uh, with with uh, Easy E and them and, and Ice Cube and them in the hood? So it's like down there on North Sixth Street. And uh, they're sitting on the front porch. All of a sudden, you hear this music. All of a sudden, you see this car slow down. He saw it. He saw it a little too late though. Next thing you know, man, them windows came down. This is right here in Nashville. He was running in the house. Bullets shot him in his ass. Ain't that right? He ended up dying in the closet, trying to get away from gunfire. Said this time I'm a preacher. Preach the funeral. It didn't go good either. It didn't go good with none of them because I, I preached the whole all the family. I preached them all. Hell was hot as hell that day. It was sure enough hot. I said, you're going to end up in the same place. I said, he, that body's there, but that soul, whoo wee it's on fire now. Then I jumped on them sorry preachers. 
You know, then I started talking to them sorry preachers up there. Boy, they know, boy, they wanted to kill me that day, didn't they? Type of preacher. And somebody won't be a preacher. You remember when I saw his mama, she looked at me and she said, don't you say nothing either. I'm going to say more than nothing. And then the other one, the, the, the middle son. Next time I seen him, all the boys gone now. Every one of them, gone. Gone. We used to play together. I can tell you all the stories we used to do. It's a wonder my two is alive, my two brothers. Because my little brother, Kerry, he got shot riding in a car on a drug deal. And apparently he's been taking the, the, the drug people money, clients, call them clients. So when they was riding down the road and stuff, this guy pulls on pistol, pow, shoots him. He rolls out of the car. They looking for him. They spraying bullets and he ends up in somebody else's house, knock down the door. Ran to the phone, bleeding out in somebody's house, and an ambulance picked him up. And of course, you know, everybody want me to come pray for him. Look at him looking. Everybody's smart. And look at all these people going off into eternity. And ain't not, if something was out there in that world, I would be in that world. There ain't nothing out there in that world. There ain't nothing else to do in life but to serve y'all. Well, I'll tell you the truth, I should have been dead many times. Many times. Many times. It's only by His grace I'm still standing here. And I'm telling the truth. You go back and play some of this stuff over your mind, you go. How in the world? Did I? What? Man, I should have been checked out here. Checked out here. And I should have been gone here. And oh, man. Man, you don't think I'm grateful for serving y'all? Please, y'all. To call me when I was in my mother's womb. That's what Paul said to Galatians, didn't he? Isn't that something? And these people are dead and they get no opportunity at eternal life. And you are alive and you don't even want it. Foul spirits, nasty attitudes. You know how we are. You know, we, we are Israel, right? We have a history of being a nation of liars. Oh, y'all, we keep your commandments. Oh, we love you. We love your father. Oh, we love you, but we don't. Isn't that right? We don't love him. Do we love him? We don't love him. We fight, bite, and devour each other. Then we come in the tabernacle on Sabbath. Oh, how I love Jesus. It don't matter that the word said and nothing that offends is going to enter into his kingdom. Where do you offend at? Jealousy offends y'all. He's the only one got the right to be jealous. Envying, bickering, backbiting, bearing false witness. Yeah, right, Brother D. Jerry. Has somebody admit that they were bearing false witness against me? Yes, sir. Now they want to talk to me. I say, you talk to Elder Doug. Talk to Elder Rufus. You don't already know that these people are still too haughty. Now, forget that the Bible says, likewise, let me see, you younger, 
Submit yourself unto the what? But you ain't got to do that if you believe yourself to be something when you're nothing there. So he ain't going to never talk to me until he meet those conditions because both those elders got something for him. And when I get to him, we're going to finish it off. Then we had, you see the reason why I stay on this homosexual spirit? Because y'all remember Ron Chapman? Yes. He was down there with him. Made a move on him and told him that I love you more than, more than you love your wife or something like that. Want to have homosexual relationships with him. Elder Darrell, I've been living 51 years and ain't no man ever approached me like that. <laughs> there ain't nothing in me that a man would even approach me you know a faggot is de defiled that they are they may look and want to desire but I, they damn sure ain't coming in front of me <laughs> what I'm trying to show y'all is, is some of y'all you're so weak in spirit you got something in you that is, all it takes is just one person to spit one lie and you believe it I just got finished telling people, I said, you seen what's taking place the last five years? Go back another ten years, same thing is taking place the last five years, same thing taking place ten years. Guess who's still standing and guess who ain't? And some of you still don't get it. Still don't get it. Just looking for an offense and you are an offense yourself. Isn't it sad? Can't save folks today. Try your best to save people and can't even save them. That's a mess, isn't it? What was that letter about that we got on all this? He moved to Los Angeles. Oh, somebody moved to Los Angeles. Get your life right. Amazing, huh? Now people are starting to see the reason why we say come out of the cities. It's peaceful out there, ain't it, Brother Josh? Hmm? It's real peaceful out there. You look out, man, this ain't half bad. Ain't too bad, and even without running water either, is it? It's like, wow, I like this. I may even be able to add a few years. This is my life out here. You will until them other Israelites get out there. <laughs> Y'all don't believe it. What did we do to Moses? And we different. Come on, Sister Ash. Shamata Shalama, brother. Nah, that's our brother for sweet. That's, a, that's an honorable brother. He's going to be here for almost two weeks. Hallelujah. Yeah, him and his wife coming. They're going to be here almost for two weeks. Staying with us here right on the land. Isn't that beautiful? Come on, Sister Ash. Have a joyful Shabbat and rest well, both you and the brothers that's doing a great work. Blessings to you all, brothers and all family, Yahisrael, straightway. You upload wisdom and pour out your heart, my brother, to all that has ears and eyes. But I read the comments of your videos, and I perceive a lot of hidden wickedness among those that call themselves believers and you hear followers. That? He perceives a lot of hidden wickedness amongst those who call themselves believers. They call themselves believers. Isn't that amazing? Now, this is somebody way across the pond. And he can discern that thousands of miles away. And here in your own backyard, you can't even see it. Huh? Say he's going to get some sons, make them come and rise up from the east to west. And they're going to sit down. Right here in the kingdom. But the children of the kingdom are going to be thrust out in the outer darkness. Well, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth because that ain't you, though, right? He said, true of the kingdom. Are you true of the king? Hmm? Okay, come on. They call themselves believers and followers of Yaisho Mashika, but they are hypocrites. And we know, my brother, that we are living in the end times and the enemy is using all sorts of evil means to deceive and divide and create wow. hatred. I pray to Yahalaha that whomever or whatever that has any sort of resentment or hatred for you, brother, pastor Dow, shall get their hatred and wickedness upon themselves and upon their heads and upon their children's heads sevenfold. Man, I, that's an Israelite. 
That's how my know how to pray. Boy, you didn't learn that in Christianity, huh? They got you lugging the devil. Man, that's a good prayer. I touch and agree. Read on. Yahisha Mashika is blessing Israel straightway, and we are increasing both in faith and numbers, and the time is coming when we shall be as lions of Yahalaha. We must pray, and so that he gives us a little of his righteousness in our heart and spirit through our Kadisha. So when the time comes, we won't go neither to the right or left and keep going in a straight way and sober mind. May Yahisha Mashika give us his joy and happiness this Shabbatah and bless us and give us according to our heart. Blessings and love, family, Yah Israel, straightway. The king is coming. Boy, isn't that beautiful? Bless you, my brother. No telling what time it is over there. He always sends great greetings and salutations and blessings. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? You know, this word and this ministry is getting out all over the place. It's only going to touch the righteous. So I don't care if the wicked get offended. They're already offended anyway. Then maybe you change your mind and start thinking, you know what I mean? I have people on there, there's people out there, brand new people coming out now. Blasting me all over the place. I listen to it. And makes Carol and him upset. I be laughing. I go, wow. <laughs> Check that out, man. <laughs> Woo-wee. I said, I didn't know I was there. Man, that's a new one on me. <laughs> no, the one that sit on the circle of the earth laugh. Come on. Good morning, Pastor Dow. What is the meaning of reproach as stated in Isaiah 4.1? Oh, oh. Thank you. Uh-oh. Boy, boy, boy. We don't want to start on this one, do we? Hoo wee What is the meaning of reproach? Isaiah 4 1. You just can't just give a stock answer. You just got to go into it, right? The answer starts in um, Yes, Yah, you the third chapter, the 16th verse. Start there, brother Shane. First thing we all need to understand and comprehend is this is that. The Most High Yah, according to Matiti 1524, he wasn't sent to nobody but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You understand that? So all you people of other nations, you ain't it. Believe it or not, Messiah didn't have no word for you when he came. Now, it ain't nothing proud about our heritage to any end because we ain't nothing but a nation of rebels. That's it. Ain't nobody can show you how to rebel like an Israelite. But he didn't have no message. Remember how he talked to that woman who was a Greek, Syrophoenician by nation? You would never believe that the Messiah would call a woman a dog. I told you, when you read translation, you're reading a dressed up version. Can you imagine someone of another nation trying to, you know, look, look at, you want to talk about racism. Is that not racism? Is that not discrimination? Here, the, here this woman trying to talk to the disciples and, they, and they'll tell, man, get this woman away from us. Get this woman away from us. I thought y'all re read the book. Y'all don't recall this? Huh? Get off of me. Keep badgering us after death. I ain't got nothing for her. Get away. Kept on and on persisting. Called her a bitch. She said, yeah. Even the bitches. Eat the crumbs. Fall from the master's table. Boy, you got called a bitch. It's over with, isn't it? That would have been a spirit rise up in you. You'd have been done for, wouldn't you? It opened up the kingdom to her. I think that y'all was doing it because he was testing her humility. Because you know you daughters of Zion are haughty, don't you? And here it goes right here. Oh, bad guy, you always picking on a woman. I wish I was there to be able to pick on Eve in the garden. Messing up the whole damn world.
All right, let's see what the prophet said. Isaiah three sixteen. Come on, brother Saint, read the book. Moreover, mm -hmm. Yahweh saith. What did Yahweh say? Because the daughters of Zion are haughty. All right, if you're a daughter of Zion, raise your hand. Right, put it up there. Don't give me no half raise up. Get it up there. Moreover, because the daughters of Zion are what? Haughty. And that, that they ain't talking about you. Talking about them people back then, right? You put them down. But that ain't you, right? Okay, so we got good. I'm glad we, boy, we mute, boy. Some of us, we afraid to answer. Yeah, that's you. You haughty. Y'all said moreover because the daughters of Zion are haughty. You're lifted up. You're arrogant. You're very prideful. Y'all said that. Y'all said that. Now you won't get mad at somebody, you Jezebels. Get mad at the king of the universe. Moreover, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. Read on. And walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. That's totally different than a, a woman of humility that has shame faces. Sobriety. Modesty. Read on. Walking and mincing as they go. Oh, you put some jewelry on them? They finish, ain't they? Come on. And making a tinkling with their feet. Mm-hmm. Therefore, Yahweh will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. You hear that? He smite the what? Crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. Just like he's smitten the crown of, of, of John Tatum's wife. Her hairline starts right here. Rest of it is real estate and skeletor. Hmm? I'm telling the truth. You black women, some of the dumbest women on the face of planet Earth. You put shit in your head to burn your damn scalp half deaf, then you wonder why come your hat you ain't got no hair on your head. Your hair ain't, ain't, ain't never been built like like let me see. Black folk got sheep hair, white folk got horse hair. And you're in this culture and you don't think you're beautiful unless you got horse hair. Now you got all these drip drip chemicals in your butt. Wonder why your liver is malfunctioning. Wonder why you, you can't have a damn bowel movement. Put all that crap in your head. And I'm telling the truth. I know all the dogs say, we don't do that no more. No, there's other people out there too now. You just get the front line hit. <laughs> I told my wife, even when we was here, I said, you need to take that shit out of your head. She'll tell you how I used to talk. Nobody can't be content with the way y'all made them. The white folk want to be black, so they sit their ass out in the sun and burnt themselves to a damn crispy torch until they're bubbling over, and then they want to put some sunscreen on and think that's going to stop it. <laughs> black folk want to be white. They go out and buy skin creams and get injections and shots and stuff to get the melanin out of them. Nobody can tend in the state that they should be in. White folks want big hair. Black folks want skinny hair. It's crazy. I'm like, man, you can't tell the devil doing a job on you. Isn't it sad? Now you see seeing white women with these big old hoop African hair earrings. Some of them wearing dreadlocks now. And I was like, can't nobody be content? Nobody be content. Satan be tearing y'all women up. I know I be getting on y'all, especially y'all hefty ones. But I'm saying that for a reason. Not because I hate you. 
I told you, somebody got to love you more than you hate yourself. Yes, Ain't nobody going to see you naked but your husband anyway. Come on, Don't he see you naked all the time? He ain't offended. Come on, That's right. in the house, My husband don't give me attention. Walk around in front of him naked more. <laughs> you already know what you look like anyway. <laughs> no, but what happens is that spirit tells you how disgusting you are. Yes. Come on. Husband got to manufacture a thought the way you used to look 20 years ago just to get aroused because you run around with these damn curtains on. You got pass down going in. Oh, yeah. He already know how you look. Yes, sir. Look at him looking. Half the impotence in America is because of women wearing curtains. Then you get mad when you're outside and one of these Gentiles walk around they showing everything one why and he giving them attention and you ain't opening yourself up to give them attention when you're supposed to be submitted to him. Ain't nothing wrong with your sexuality. Narcissism done tore you up. Look at him looking. I bet your husband ain't never ashamed when he walk around all in front of you. Boy, y'all something, boy. I be streaking him out. I like wearing clothes anyway and just to get out in public. Y'all gained 10 pounds and you and you didn't you put rejection on you. Yes. Your husband ain't said nothing. Nope. Go and hurry up and crawl up under the sheet so he can't see you. <laughs> Y'all brothers need to invest in a million watt spotlight. You don't want my eyes getting full of the Gentiles. Well, damn it, take off your clothes so I can get my eyes full in. Yeah. See, in this society, it's amazing. You can't even speak honorably about sexuality yeah. without there's some kind of defilement coming up. Yes. But then you ain't afraid. You ain't. You don't care nothing about the prostitutes, the whores, the whoremongers, the faggots, the homosexuals. Everything that is an abomination. Oh, I can't believe you said that. Yeah, I did. You've been married to your wife 20, 30 years. Sure, your chest is sagging. He still see it. Y'all I'm talking about getting a spirit. Y'all know that, right? Y'all sisters know I'm getting a spirit too, don't you? Yeah, I am getting a spirit. This spirit got you... Got your husband trying to experience rejection because of your own Come on, rejection. Come on. He loved it when you were this size, he loved it when you this size, and he just got more to love when you this size. Come on, man. People just something else, man. Let me tell you, boy. You ever thought about them two spies that, that, that went into a Jericho? Went in the Rahab's house? What'd they go to a prostitute house for? Oh, I know. They, they Israelites, so they pure. Oh, yeah, okay. What'd they go to the prostitute house for? What, what was Judah leave, leaving, leaving the land of Judah and going out here to Tabah? See, y'all just like dressing things up. I ain't dressing it up. I tell it like it stuns you too, don't it? And y'all sees all this. 
You don't think Bathsheba was selectively placed herself where the king could see her? When Naomi told Ruth to go lay at Boaz's feet, that isn't it. I had a brother talk to the other day. He said, my wife says she's got a personal testimony she wants to tell you. I said, she can't testify. She ain't got no testicles. You see what I'm talking about? Y'all screwed up in the head. See, I just got Venice bamboozing. You don't even know and when the truth is truth. You get so hey. Why don't you go search out all this stuff? You're going to find out I'm not the one that's foul. I'm not the one that's vulgar. You are. I don't know. Boy, I tell you, this is a, <laughs> this is a tough one here today, boy. And we ain't got started. Well, Pastor, you just say stuff we ain't never heard before. Faith come out here. How many times I said something, you go, oh, ain't no way. Then you go back and search it out. Next thing you know, I, dang it, he right again. He right again. Had somebody try to set up. First of all, what he said, do you know Geno Jenner? I said, no, I don't know him. I heard of him. He said, well, I'd like to have a national, I'd like to have a nice debate with you and him for edification. I said, who are you? Uh, by the way, Geno Jenner don't want to debate me. He wants to stay in them corner with everybody else. He definitely don't want to debate me. He even told me I could pick the subject. I'll get the pet peeves of them. Divorce and remarriage and polygyny. I tap that whole congregation. A lot of them women, be, boy, they'd be free because you know the reason why? They in a congregation that if you get married and you get divorced, you can't ever marry again. You know how many of them women in that congregation burning? I could set them free at my word. They'll get up and leave first church. Got y'all under bondage. Y'all made a provision for divorce in Deuteronomy 24, but we got to throw that away, right? See, what people do is they skip, they go straight to Paul without knowing what the law says. I got to rip them apart. Maybe this will get to them. Maybe, maybe then you'll see an intelligent debate. But it'll be vigorous because I'm going to be passionate. I don't believe how I many people just bound by religion. Can't get free. Read on, brother Shane. And Yahweh will discover their secret parts. Yahweh's going to discover the daughters of Zion secret parts. Come on. In that day, Yahweh will take away the bravery. Don't that make y'all brave when y'all was made up and dressed up? Sisters, won't y'all say something? Don't it? You look so bold, man. You shoot, man. You stand eyeball to eyeball and toe to toe with a man, wouldn't you? That make a boy put it on you, man. You think you Batman. <laughs> I'm serious. Ask them. They, man, that, it puts a spirit on them. Come on. Yahweh will take away the bravery of their tinkering He's going to take orders. away the bravery. Everything that makes them brave. Come on. Of their tinkling ornaments about their feet. Yep. And their calls. Mm -hmm. And their round tires. Now we ain't going to break down all this. We'll be here all day long breaking down all this. Go do some study, all right? Come on. Round tires like the moon. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers. Boy, they decked, ain't they? Come on. The bonnets and the ornaments of the legs. Yep. And the headbands mm -hmm. and the tablets. Mm -hmm. 
And the earrings. And the what? Earrings. I always capitalize on that. And the earrings. Read on. The rings and nose jewels. Ooh, y'all taking it all away. Come on. The changeable suits of apparel. Man. Many of you got too many of them too, don't you? Changeable suits of apparel. Come on. And the mantles. Man, he gonna break y'all down. Uh, he's stripping y'all bare dollars of Zion. Read on. And the wimples. Mm-hmm. And the crisping pins. Come on. The glasses and the fine linen. And yep. the And the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass. Y'all is out of the whole wardrobe. And it shall come to pass. Prophecy. Read. That instead of sweet smell, uh-huh. there shall be stink. Ooh. Instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink. Who's doing all this talking? Uh, are we going to pay attention? Read on. And instead of a girdle, a uh-huh. rent. Hmm. And instead of well-set hair, what? Baldness. Y'all hear that? They'll braid their hair, pull it, put about 50 pounds of tension on their head. And then wonder why come the roots and everything coming out. And, and every year the hairline recedes. See, my hairline used to be like right here. Now I'm getting older, it's right here. It's probably going to be back here. See, I don't give a shit if it all fall out. Because <laughs> as long as I got it on, it made me look good. You know how I know that? Carol told me. And you know how you women think. If your man ugly, won't nobody want him, so you ain't got to worry about him getting another wife, so keep him ugly. <laughs> They don't want nobody want them. <laughs> Read on. And instead of a stomacher. Instead of a stomacher. A girding of sackcloth. Whoo, we're going to put y'all in a state of mourning. Instead of this haughtiness, this pride, it's going to put y'all in a state of mourning. Read on. And burning instead of beauty. Hmm. Read on, keep reading. Thy men shall fall by the sword. Now, see the setting? First he gives us the condition of the daughter's design. Then he said the men are going to fall by what? The sword. That's war. That's war. The population of the men are going to be decimated by war. There's a war. Read. And thy mighty in the war. See that? Come on. And her gates shall lament and mourn. And she, being desolate, shall sit upon the ground. You hear that? And then some, the woman being desolate is going to do what? Sit upon sit the ground. Sit upon the ground. You know why? Because the majority of all the men are dead. Because of war. Check out those conditions. Your jewelry is not going to help you. Your makeup ain't going to help you. Your girdles ain't going to help you. Your tinkling feet's not going to help you. Your well-set hair ain't going to help you. The, the, the state of the environment or the nation at this time is nothing but burning. War, stench, dead men everywhere. Everywhere. You know how hard it's going to be to find a man in the nation when the majority of all of them are dead? Come on. And in that day. And in that day. That's a particular day. Read. Seven women. Seven women are going to do what? Shall take hold of one man. You know the reason why? Ain't no other men around. The woman, they all going to be running to one man. Y'all see the content? Seven women. They're going like, man, I, they ain't nobody going to have no problem with collision in. Shouldn't have a problem with it now, but you ain't going to have no problem. Yeah, it makes no difference to a man. You got a problem with it anyway. 
Now, why will y'all turn around and make this prophecy right here? And say, in that day, seven women are going to take a hold of one man. What are they going to do? Saying, we will eat our own bread. Uh-huh. We're still going to supply everything we, all, we got for ourselves. Because you remember, you're this feminist American woman. you done everything yourself. Come on. And wear our own apparel. Uh-huh. Because why? Over in the law, a man is supposed to provide food, clothing, and conjugal rights. Isn't that right? Read. Only let us be called by thy name. Uh-huh. To take away our reproach. Let us come into your house because this ain't no just one and done. They got to come into the house. Let's call by your name. Take away reproach is to be able to have a seed. This is what y'all said. And with this advent of fagism, you women are really up again. You got, you got the, the trainees, the transvestites, y'all losing too. You got the homosexual faggot men y'all losing too. Then you got your mouth that cause you to lose too. Yeah, you do. And a man is becoming scarce. Now today, you even got a whole lot more. War, America's a war machine like Rome. Incarceration, death on the city streets, drugs. It's hard to even find one man. Some of you, I'm waiting on, go ahead, you're going to die waiting. No, but that's your condition, it be that way. And then you got men today. MGTOW is another one coming up. Ain't nothing right. If a man choose to be celibate, he can be celibate. Paul said, I wish that every man was I. Because if you get married, all you're going to get is trouble in the flesh. The women say, well, he causes trouble. The Bible says if a man gets married, all he's going to get is trouble in the flesh. And say nothing about the woman. Amazing, isn't it? Y'all still love y'all? This y'all talking right here. Look at all this. This even one if there's even any men left today. Even today. Read on. In that day shall the branch of Yahweh be beautiful and glorious. When? After he strips them bare. After he takes everything from you that causes you to be haughty. After he kills the majority of men to humble you so you can get in your rightful place and position as a woman. Then that day, the daughter of Zion, then that day, they're going to be what, Brother Zion? Going to be beautiful and beautiful glorious. and glory. Then and only then. You're only going to be beautiful when you saddle up with a man. And all your pride is gone. All your haughtiness and everything you trusted in, these vanities are gone. Because you'll be in a humble state. It's also the same way with us as the assembly. Because you men are high and lifted up too. You're haughty as hell. Isn't that hypocritical? Yes. A man wants his wife to submit, but he can't submit. Right. Yes, sir. Is that a hypocrite? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. See what? See y'all? He don't see his man see. He, he said, "Then that day you'll be beautiful." Yeah, when you look like what the world called plain Jane, and that day you're beautiful. When you're married to a man. And you have his child. And seven women going to be in unity. For the first time in the history of the world. Think about the conditions that's got to take place first though in order to get us there. Can you imagine men <laughs> see a pack of women coming and they take off running. 
You got seven over here saying, Roy, you turn, man. You got to duck and dodge and hide and crawl up under stuff and everything. You got to go. You got to get brothers going recon for you. Just going to be able to just be able to go buy some food, man. Boogers coming out of trees. <laughs> but there's one. Please, 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 please. Look at him, look at him. <laughs> I, I, I remember preaching a message some time ago telling all the people, especially the, I always talk to the young girls. I tell them, I said, don't worry, you leave here, you're going to go out there and whore yourself. That's what are going to do. And your lovers don't look at you the same way that they do their own. You think they do. They tell you how many sisters done left here. Young sisters. They go in a relationship for a little while. They have three, four, five babies. Next thing you know, the man done kicked traces. And guess who's saddled with all those babies? There's very few honorable men today that's actually going to join themselves up with a woman. That, I mean, have one, but three, four, five of them? Lower your value. Can't stick with y'all because you're rebellious. And that rebellion leads you in certain pathways. But I know, but I'm the fault. I'm, I'm, I'm breathing and living and I'm the fault for everything. Trying to tell you stuff to save your soul alive you don't even want to hear it. Make you honorable women. Then you get out there and everybody forsakes you and you have nobody to fall back on. At least in Israel, your husband pass on, or if he gets a damn spirit on him, cut a damn fool, and then he goes out, and next thing you know, he crazy as hell. At least you do have a nation to fall back on. It sure does take a long time for you to get you right, though. See, y'all's humility plan for a woman, or the feminine is going to be humbled. Especially if they're an Israelite. He got a plan. War is ugly. It's really ugly. Read on. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent. Look and at that. But after all this takes place. Come on. Fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are scattered of Israel. Y'all hear that? For them that are scattered of Israel. Oh, they're amazing, huh? You know, it sickens me to know that the Most High Yah had to continue to keep repeating the same old stuff again with us as his nation. We've got so many history, so much history in front of us, behind us at least. We see exactly how Israel was, and we read the book, and some of us, remnant, is actually getting it. Otherwise, we walk around all day. Talking to everybody else but me. You sow, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So it could be out in the open, be behind closed doors. You sow bad, you're going to reap bad. You sow good, you're going to reap good. And your life is the field. And you are eating the fruit of your own way. Whether you like it or not. You got the apocrypha. Go to Ecclesiasticals of Sirach 23, 23. Oh, glory to the king. Y'all still happy and elated about coming to Shabbat? Yes, sir. I know. I better go ahead and clap because everybody else does. If I don't, I'll look like I'm the one got the spirit on me. You know I love y'all, don't you? Yes, sir. I really truly do. Them preachers out there afraid to preach. Number one, because they don't love themselves. They don't love their own soul. That's the only deliverance I get is, is when I preach the word. I remember when I first started preaching, man, I, I said, okay, I'll, you know, kind of softly blow. I just preach and everything. And man, we got to jump around and everything and stuff, but I felt bad afterwards. I had this heavy spirit on me. 
So I said, okay, I know, all right, I'll, I'll go in a little bit more and everybody get a little attention. I got everybody hop around, jump and scream, hey, hallelujah, glory to God. I get finished, everybody, oh man, I, and I, man, I had a heavy spirit on me. Because then you get that Ruach said, you're going to preach what I tell you. <laughs> uh oh, I mean, your focus is off, boy. And boy, I've been delivered ever since. Yeah, yeah I, was in my, I was in my 20s. It's a scary thing, man, when you preach and stand up in front of all these eyes looking at you, all these spirits. You, you got you, and then that host is with you. <laughs> At any given time, you can look at the eyes, one of them will pop up. And they'll be looking. And you done checked out and thought. And then you come back in, thought, move the spirit back over, and then you back in, oh, there they go, they back again. You think I'm kidding? You ever felt anger before? Don't you get angry sometimes when the word being preached? Oh, yeah. That means you moved out of the way and that spirit of anger that's controlling you is there now. Now I got to sit and deal with that booger. Uh -huh. until, you, until we get you back. Yes, then I was like, oh, look who's back again. That's part of the dynamic of being up here. Why do you think I stay on certain things so long? Uh -huh. yes, sir. Yes, sir. No demon trying to punk me. All right. <laughs> Glory to the king. Sirach 23, 23. Come on, listen to the book. For first, she hath disobeyed the law of the Most High. I tell you what, so we get some context. Go to verse 21. This man shall be punished in the streets of the city. And where he suspecteth not, he shall be taken. Mm -hmm. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband. Now notice, the context is a wife that does what? Leave, Leave her, husband. her husband, meaning she didn't get a divorce, she just left. Read on. And bringeth in an heir by another. She goes out, she leaves her husband, gets pregnant by another man. Read on. For first, she hath dis disobeyed the law of the Most High. First, she hath disobeyed the law by what? Commit adultery. Read. And secondly, she has trespassed against her own husband. And she has trespassed against her own husband, which is a covenant leader. Come on. And thirdly, she hath played the whore. She has played the what? The whore. I mean, women, y'all know this probably doing this in America. You get a case of the ass and they step out from under their husband. And the Bible says she done played the whore. Read on. Played the whore in adultery. In adultery. So you can be a whore and adulteress. You don't have to be single just to be a whore. Like the thought tells you today. Read on. And brought children by another man. And brought children by another man. Come on. She shall be brought out into the congregation. Okay. Let's see what else it says. An inquisition shall be made of her Diligent children. Diligent inquiry shall be made. Come on. Her children shall not take root. And her branches shall spring forth no fruit. Why? Now you got a bastard, according to the law, can't enter into the congregation, no root, to the tenth generation. See the reason why it pays to be humble? Read on. She shall leave her memory to be cursed. Y'all hear that? Her whole memory is going to be what? Cursed. Cursed, just like it said in Proverbs 6. Once a man... Is ever ever found out and caught in adultery, he gets a wound of dishonor and a reproach that would never be taken away. And here I am preaching and teaching to this vile, froggish, sexual spirit that's out of order, trying to save Israel from themselves, and people are running fast as they can. To go the other way.
I just dealt with this situation this week. Had a woman take off, leave her husband, and go lay with another man. You women screwed up as hell. What a mess. But you notice how nobody gets upset when you talk about fagism? Nobody gets upset when these transvestites and everybody else out there running dirty and look. They're celebrated in this world. But you to be moral and have morality? Man. You like the offscouring of the earth. See how the Satan is flipping the script? Told you he's getting everybody ready for this new world order. I hope we learned something. Just a little bit. A man cannot commit adultery with a woman who is not married. That tears up all the Christianity and they. Deuteronomy says over in 24th chapter, you receive a bill. A divorce means you are free to go out and marry whomsoever you will. And then people think they understand Paul or Saul. People need to shut up. They're causing a lot of damage on people. A whole bunch of it. Do y'all see how the father don't think nothing like we think? Now you see the reason why our people run to the Gentiles? Because they had freedom. I saw a video this week. This boy, six years old, six or seven years old. Drag queen. Parents are dressed, done dressed him up, and he's out there doing drag shows. And he's telling the people, I think you ought to do whatever you want to do. Whose doctrine is that? Somebody say Alistair Crowley. The book of Satan. Do as thou will. And if your parents won't let you do what you want to do, then get new parents. Hey, I just left Canada. Canada has done fell off the damn deep end for sure. Why am I holding this like I'm talking to a mic? <laughs> Isn't that funny? It should be nice if you could catch you when you were doing something wrong. Now nah, it ain't funny no more, is it? in Canada, I've got pictures that I'm trying to put something together. They got an elementary school. Then we sit there and look at them flags flying, Carol. They have a homosexual flag right below the school flag. I'll show it to you. It's coming. And you know what they got now? It has passed as law. If a, a child comes home and says that they are now this. And if the parents try to sway their mind. They get thrown in jail and the child is taken away from them. That is now law in Canada. And you better learn these new pronouns. You don't call them she or he. They are they. You better get it right too. Because if you don't you just committed a hate crime. And you're going to jail. That's law in Canada now. In Canada. And America ain't no damn better. You cross the border. I got pictures there too. I stopped at the line. No, I stopped out there. Raise the, raise the window down and take a picture. People ain't going to believe this until they see it. You come across the border. Right up on the American flag. They got three big ass great gay flags. Welcome to the homosexuality of the universe. You enter into the faggot nation of America. Flying it proud. I told Carol, I said, babe, you know what? I need to make up a flag for us heterosexuals. We need a heterosexual flag. I got stuff in my mind. You may not like it, though. I mean, everybody else flaunting what they call their freedom and stuff. We need our own damn flag. 
morality is under attack. They have made it law. Go check it out. It is now law in Canada. And if you make them feel, if they just feel uncomfortable, they got you in a sling. It's coming to Canada. Whatever takes place, remember that's the crown, right? Whatever takes place in England, England is a providence of Britain. Britain is a providence of England. It's, coming, it's, here, it's here. Just look at it now. It's a hate crime. Why are you hating? Everything's about love. Now you see the reason why your children don't need to be in them public schools? That's what they want you to go to them public schools because it's all about the children. They want to turn them all out. That way they have a bunch of mindless minions and ain't nobody fighting against them. Nobody resisting them. You can go ahead and spend four or five years having them in your home. And of course some of you mothers out there, whoo! I'm so glad that bus come by and get my children. I get a break. Don't you? You get eight hours of break, you pieces of shit. That's right. That's it. And it's sad. You get eight hours of break from them hoodlums that you created. Then your son come back. Daughter come back. And you can't even spend an hour and a day with them when they're young because you're too busy watching your soap operas, talking on damn telephone, text messaging, and Facebooking. And the only thing you want them is out of your hair. You enjoy them when they little babies. Get on star boy. You, I told you, there's a reason why. I told you. You ain't got to never, ever, ever, ever Teach a child how to do wrong. It's already in them. You spend the rest of your days telling them what's right because they were born in sin and shaving in iniquity. And you have to shape them to your morality. But see, if you turn around and give your children up for 8 to 12 hours a day, guess who morality they learn it? That's why the book says train up a child in the way that they should go. You can't wait to get them out of your hand. Get them on the public food system so when they come back turned out, Then they call the law on you. My mama and my daddy trying to make me wear pants. Now you can't even say that now. They goes, everybody wearing them. I was showing the other day, I said, okay, I said, look, the first bikini came into being in England in 1946. There was such an outrage by the church. By the time Marilyn Monroe got on the scene, man, everybody was at the beach. Now they all but wearing bikinis outside the Walmart. Forget the pants. I never understood it. A woman will go to the beach. <laughs> That's what she'll do. Run around a voluptuous two piece bikini. And then put on a pair of flip flops. Go to the store and put on a big old shirt and have a big old towel around them and cover up. You basically went a bra and panties. But then if somebody come to your door to visit your house, your wife, you won't let her go to the door wearing a bra and panties. But you get out on the beach. volleyball and every dang thing else. We are screwed up in the head. Talk! And now they are threatened because the Muslims are wearing burqas and covering themselves up. They want to go skinny them too. But they covered up and you threaten. 
See, clothe, right mind. People get afraid. <laughs> you put on clothes, men, get, they, get, they get scared to death. You take them off, you ride it home. Now explain that to me. How are you so comfortable out there in front of a, hundreds and thousands of people? Is that because everybody naked? In New York, they hold body painting festivals. Men and women stand out butt naked and get paint put all over them. If I wasn't an Israelite, man, I'd pour me up a chair. <laughs> Drinking me a pot. There are some people just sitting on the rails. Big smiles on their face. <laughs> Boy, we, Satan just about got us what we need, where he needs us. Y'all okay? Yes, I'm good, I'm saying, I'm sure I've said enough to offend everybody. You see the reason why there's only going to be a remnant of Israel? That, that we, that we hit, we just, we hit, period. And look what he's done. You take a, take, just take a look around at us, just look around. You see your calling, brother. Not many mighty. Look at the diversity in here. And, and, and all of you come from different geographical areas and that's all y'all could get. And you don't see your calling? You literally got to be blind in one eye and can't see out the other to, to not see what's going on. Oh, them boys getting big, ain't they? Every time you see them boys, they remind you how old you're getting. Huh? Mom and daddy busting y'all beside your head. I don't know how to answer. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> they some good boys. Are y'all all right? Y'all still offended? I'm just asking because you're going to have to answer the y'all. I'm the least of your worries. I'm free. I deliver my soul. Uh-oh. Look at him looking.